Fine, good afternoon to you all students. Hi students, how are you? I hope you all are fine and you all are doing well. I hope by God's grace you all are safe. So pray to God daily for your health, your studies, food, your parents and your environment. Okay students. So warm greetings to you all students. Welcome to our today's online class. So now we are studying about chapter 4. So what's the title of your 4th chapter students? Algorithmic strategies. So this chapter first itself I am telling you are going to study 5 important algorithmic questions isn't it? So 4 questions already I have taught. Uh, since uh, from the last two classes isn't it so have you all studied that till uh, that four uh, algorithmic questions have you all studied that question students so please study okay don't waste time so this is very 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 important questions among the five questions only one more question is left okay so today i am going to take that fifth algorithm okay so what are the algorithms you have studied till uh, last class students what are the algorithms so algorithm is divided into two types isn't it what are they Searching algorithm as well as sorting algorithm. So searching algorithm, what are the searching algorithms you have studied? Linear search and binary search, isn't it? Then sorting algorithm, what are the sorting algorithms? Selection sort as well as bubble sort. Okay. So, so today also you are going to study about one more sorting algorithm. Okay. So what sorting algorithm you are going to study means insertion sort. Okay, so yesterday you have studied selection sort and bubble sort. So what's the difference between sorting and searching? Searching means, so you are going to search some values, already some values you have stored in the list, isn't it? From the list you are going to search and find any one value. Sorting means already values are there. So you are going to arrange the values in any one of the order. Maybe in ascending order or descending order. That is sorting. So for that you have studied two sorting algorithms. What are they? Bubble sort and selection sort. Okay. So this insertion sort is also a sorting algorithm. Means what is the first point you should try? So it is a sorting algorithm. So insertion sort is also which kind of algorithm? Sorting algorithm. Okay, so how this sorting algorithm will work mean? So, listen carefully. So, it will take one element from the list. Okay, so listen carefully already. In a list, lot of elements you have stored from the list. You are going to take one, one element. First, you will take one element. Okay, so then you will compare whether that element is smaller than next one or not. Okay, so like this, the bubble sort. Then, you will arrange that element in a correct position order okay so after rearranging the element in a correct position order you will get what one new sorted list understood so i'll explain with example then only you will get understand okay so likewise first it will take the first and second element then it will put in a correct order then the next one second and third element so second time it won't take second and third first second and third next first second and third and fourth likewise so it will find which is the smallest element among them and it will sort in a correct order understood so likewise it is sort and finally it will create what one sorted array okay so how many number of sorters or how many number of passes need means n minus one so what's the meaning of n minus one means listen carefully for example 10 elements you have stored in the array so what's the value of n now 10 so n minus one means one 10 minus 1. So, what's the value of n? 9. That means first elements you are not going to sort. So, from the second elements only you are going to sort. So, how many passes are sorting you record? n minus 1. That is how many elements are there? That element minus 1. Understood? So, what are the points you need to write in insertion sum? It's a simple sorting algorithm. So, how this algorithm will work? So, it will take elements one by one. So, and it will insert the particular element in the correct position order. So, it this way will continue till we will get the sorted array. So, how many number of sorted or how many number of passes you require till n minus 1. That means 10 elements is there means 10 minus 1, 9 passes required. Understood? Okay. So, if algorithm question is asked means what you need to write first, you need to write the definition and explanation. Next, what's the step? You need to write the pseudocode. Okay. So, what's the next thing? Pseudocode. Okay, so listen, so what's the first step? Okay, so first step means, so now you are taking the first element. So what they are telling you, if it is a first element means, so no need to sort the first element. So it is already sorted. 
Understood what is step 1? So, if it is a first element means, if it is a first element means, so no need to sort. So, already it is a sorted list only. Okay. Then, what is the next step? You need to pick the next element. Okay. Next, listen. So, compare the next element with all the elements in the sorted array. Understood? You are going to compare the element in the all the other elements in the sorted array. Okay. Next, shift all the elements. That means which is greater. Greater elements need to be shifted. Smaller elements need to be moved to the front side. Understood? So you are going to shift all the elements. That means greater elements you are going to change the pace or shifting. The smaller elements you are keeping in the correct position. So the sorting we are calling as an insert. So which place you need to place a small element. That place you need to insert the value. Okay, so this step will repeat until you will get the sorted array. Understood what's the first step? So if it's the first element means no need to sort, already it is sorted. What's the second step? You are going to pick the next element. So next element you are comparing with all the elements. I are going to arrange the element in a particular order. Okay, so shift all the elements in a particular list. Greater elements means you need to shift and insert the smaller element in that particular value. So you can continue this step until you will get this sorted array. Understood? See the example. So this is the example for this question. Listen carefully. See this is the element. Okay, how many elements are there? One, two. Totally 10 elements are there. So how many passes you need? 10 minus 1, that is 9. Listen carefully. Already I said... So, if it is a first element means already it is sorted. Okay, no need to sort. So, what is the first element? 44. Whether you need to sort now? No. So, which element you are going to sort or which element you are going to take, that element you need to shade it and show. Okay, so first element. So, only they are giving 44 is sorted because it is a first item. Okay, then you need to come back the next two element. See, so what are the next two elements? 16 and 44. Which one is smaller? 16. So, 16 needs to come at the first place 44 needs to come at second place so which one you are moving to that place first place so that you need to write the insert insert which value you are moving so which value you are moving to the first place 16 so next up you need to write insert at 16 understood so this two values sorted what's the next step you need to take the three third value so compare the three values 16 44 and 83 so already it is in arranged order isn't it so so now which element you have taken 83 so which element you have taken that element you need to write inserted so now which element you are going to compare 83 so you are writing inserted 83 so already it is in arranged order isn't it so it's a smaller to be only 16 44 83 so no need to sort isn't it next take the next element so how many elements you are going to take as a sort that you need to shade it and show Okay, next is 7. So 7 means listen. So 7 will needs to come to which place? First place, isn't it? So 7, you are moving to the first place. Now it is order, no? 7, 16, 44, 83. So which value you are moving? 7. So you need to write the value inserted 7. Understood? Then come by the next element, 67. Okay, 67 needs to move to which place? In the place of 83. So you need to write inserted 67. Now it is ordered 7, 16, 44, 67 and 83. Next you will need to take which value? 21. So 21 needs to come at which place? Third place. So that value you need to write insert at 21. Then you need to take next value till 34. So 34 needs to come at which place? After 21. So you need to write insert at 34. Next come at 45. So 45 needs to come at which place? After 44. So you need to write insert at 45. Next you are taking lost value 10. So 10 needs to come at which place? Second place. Now read the array. 7, 10, 16, 21, 34, 45, 67 and 83. Now it is arranged in ascending order. Isn't it? Now whether you have got the sorted array? Yes, you have got the sorted array. Understood the concept students? So listen carefully. So find algorithms you have studied. Isn't it? What are the algorithms? By linear search, binary search, then bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort. So among that book back question, linear search, binary search and bubble sort. This three are book back questions, but you should study this two also. Insertion sort and selection sort. Why I am telling me? So if you have studied this five question means, surely you can attend one five mark question for your annual exam. Understood what I am telling? So if you have studied thorough this five question means, really I am telling, surely you can able to attend one five mark questions when your annual exam. So you should study and write it and see. Okay, 
once uh, once you have studied completed means so you should write it and see in your notebook or any rough note so each and every algorithm what are the things you need to write you need to write the put the heading write the definition then put the heading pseudo code then example understood okay then so last topic in this chapter is dynamic programming okay so dynamic programming is similar to modules or modular program already you have studied modules no same concept only okay so dynamic program is similar to divide and conquer what do you mean by divide and conquer what do you mean by modules a big program is divided into a smaller smaller pieces called what mod same only here also you are going to divide a big thing or big problem or big program or big solution you are going to divide into a smaller smaller sub problem that is called what dynamic program okay so listen carefully for example you are going to add 15 numbers you are going to add 15 numbers so first 15 numbers you are going to add first you are going to add 10 numbers and you are storing in a one module module 1 so next you are going to add next 10 numbers then you are going to store that one module 2 so likewise you are going to store in each and everything in a separate separate module so for example another one program you need adding of 10 numbers at that time no need to write the program again you can call the module 1 understood so that only they are telling the results can be reused to complete the process whenever you need you can able to reuse the result understood okay so using this dynamic programming you can able to get the result or obtain the result in easier way because in order to solve the big program or big problem in the same step you can able to solve the problem in a smaller smaller steps and whenever you need you can get the solution okay so each and every for example adding 50 numbers first you will add module 1 10 numbers then 10 numbers likewise to five modules so each and every time you are going to check the previously solved sub problems okay for example first 10 number answer is going to add with what next 10 number so previously solved means first 10 number answer then next 20 number sorry next 10 number likewise each and every things you are going to add with what previously solved problems okay so at last if you need need to get the full solution means you will add what all the sub problems understood so dynamic program is similar to which approach divide and conquer approach what do you mean by divide and conquer same to modules see a big program is or big problem is divided into a smaller smaller modules okay so you can able to store each modules in a separate name and the results whenever you need you can able to reuse the result to complete the process okay so using the dynamic programming you can able to find the result of all the problem in a very very easier manner okay so if you need to get the final solution means you need to overlap or all, all the sub problem okay so always you need to add the previously solved problems understood okay so steps to do dynamic programming so what are the steps required to do dynamic programming okay so what's the first step means listen so one problem they have given so that problem you are going to divide into a smaller smaller sub problems understood so what's the step to do dynamic programming first you are going to divide the given big problem into a smaller smaller sub problems okay so if you need to get the full solution what you will do so the optimum solution for the given problem can be achieved by using result of smaller sub problem that only i said if you are going to add 15 numbers means you are going to divide into 10 10 numbers is each module so 15 numbers adding means you should add five modules isn't it likewise if you need to who add or if you need to get the correct solution that is optimum solution mean you can add or you can get the result of all the sub problem okay so this dynamic program uses a concept called memotion memotion okay very 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 important to mark question this one define memotion okay so which uh, concept using this uh, which algorithm using this one dynamic programming or dynamic algorithm using the concept called memotion okay so what do you mean by this one we can say memotion or memotion okay so this is a one of the technique is used to speed up the computer program okay this is one of the important technique to speed up the computer program okay so how it will work means it will store all the results okay so it will store all the results in a cache memory that means uh, so for example 
for adding 15 numbers, first to 10 numbers you are storing in one module. So that result will store in one catch memory. Okay, so next 10 numbers you are going to add that will store in next to catch memory. So each and every time if you need to use the same thing, no need to add or, or go to write the program same thing. You can get the result from the cache memory. Okay, so listen by storing the results of extensive function calls. That means in a program you can write function. All the function calls you are going to returning the catch result. Each time you are getting the result and storing which one? Catch result. Then same input sakwaranagi. Same thing you are going to do done in again and again means no need to do again. So you can able to get from where? Catch result. Understood? Very very important to mark question. So define my machine. It is a one of the optimization technique mainly used to want speed up the computer programs okay so here you can able to store all the expansion function calls or whatever may be so all the things you can able to store in one as a cache result or so cache memory so why we are using means so same inputs you need to use again and again means you can able to use from this cache memory understood students Okay, so today up to this uh, enough I think it's so one more topic is there. Okay, so that I'll take our next class and I'll mark and give question answers from this chapter onwards. I'll <coughs> mark and give question answers. Okay, so like, similarly last year I have give, mark and give question answers through online. No? Same way I'll mark and give from this chapter onwards remaining. So three chapters I'll mark and give whenever I'll get the time. Okay, students. So today what are things you have studied? So today you have studied the insertion sort algorithm. Then you have studied. So after completion of this session, students, you should study, write it and see this insertion sort algorithm. Okay. Then what are topics I have studied? Modular programming, sorry, dynamic programming and the steps to do dynamic programming. So dynamic programming also important question. So this in under steps to do my dynamic programming, memo session. This question is very, very important to my question. So please study students. Don't waste time again and again I am telling. Okay. Take care students. Thank you.